Drifting on a memory yeah. Ain't no place I'd rather be than with you yeah. Loving you Oh well, well Days will make a way for night all we need is candlelight and a soul, yeah, soft and low. Oh, y'all remember that? Some of y'all was just, some of y'all was just way too young to remember anything like that. But I want to say good morning, good afternoon, good evening to you, family. And Isaac Brothers, oh. oh, every time I go into my memory bank and just think about what I was doing when that record came out. Days will make a way for night. All we need is candlelight and a soul. How many of y'all out there remember that? That's all I want to know. If you do, come on, y'all. Just uh, let me know in the comment section that you remember it. And it was a beautiful time. It was a beautiful time on the planet. Anyway, with that being said, I'm sure we always, everybody say that. Back in the day. Um, back in the day when things were cool. All right, let's get into this, family. I'm going to talk about something today that don't nobody probably want to talk about. But because I experienced this, and this is where I live, and this is where I am working so diligently uh, to overcome, and if not overcome, to be able to identify and to you know make moves in that direction when we start talking about trauma bonding. A lot of y'all don't know what trauma bonding is. A lot of y'all think it's just to a, um, a lover, but it's not. It could be to a friend, parent. The thing is, you need to understand, we need to un understand and acknowledge just how deep a trauma bond is. Because a lot of folks think that's just Hogwash. Um, but I want you to deal, uh, check this out for a minute. Trauma bond and trauma bonding is similar to Stockholm Syndrome, in which people held captive come to have feelings or trust or even affection for the very person who captured and held them against their will. This type of survival strategy can also occur in a relationship. Uh, mother and daughter, father and son, mother and father, father and son, everybody. Um, so you may ask, what is a trauma bond? Well, as a person that suffered and suffers still uh, suffers from this day, and that's why I think Especially, I think people, everybody, it should be a prerequisite, especially before you be in a relationship, that we all have um, something that makes us identify with our character defects. Because if we don't, then we go around and keep picking the same picker, thinking our picker is broken, but it's really inside that we're broken at. And um, we're trying to rectify or have a corrective outcome to what has happened to us in our precious childhoods that a lot of us don't even uh, understand and how deep that goes. That's why I go so hard for the kids because adults ain't them the kids that grow up physically, but a lot of them haven't grown up emotionally. And a lot of us that have been traumatized in one way or another. Uh, see, you know, a lot of 
a lot of times we think that being traumatized has to come from, you know, personally being beat all the time. And well, I mean, that's that could be, but it could also be emotional. And it could also be if you were a very sensitive child to come to birth and have to live with people who argue all the time, who fuss all the time, who always turned up on the bush. I mean, for can you imagine for your child who lives in this, you know, third dimensional realm almost, and everything is not in, clearly into focus, and have to live with the people, the two people that they love so much, fight, argue, scream, fuss, fight, all day, every day, or being born into a house of drug addicts or alcoholism is very hard for the child because he's going to bond to the character defects that come along with that drug of choice that that, that, that parent or caregiver is using. So, you know, what I think in my, you know, this is just my, in my personal healing because like I said, um, it, it is such a strong relationship that you really have to step back and check yourself because it seems like you repeat the same trauma over and over and over. So trauma bonding is the connection a person forms to a person who causes physical, emotional, and or sexual harm in a relationship. I have been guilty of these things. I have inflicted this upon my partner, and it has been inflicted uh, upon me. Okay, so that's how I know about these uh, relationships. These types of relationships usually develop subtly and slowly over time. This bond creates a toxic and highly dangerous situation that continues to get worse and becomes more and more difficult to break. Y'all want to know why we running around seeing all these men killing these women or these women killing these men because it's not relegated to a certain sex. Let's get that straight. <laughs> That's what MGTOW is all about. Men going their own way. Okay? I'm not saying how or healthy it is, but because of the environment, at this point, I think it's very healthy that everybody push back and begin to look at their behavior, especially before you start bringing more and more children in the world in this toxic trauma bond uh, type of environment. Um, it, it, it's really deep because it, it, the bonding occurs when a person involved in a toxic or abusive relationship forms a strong bond with an often identity idealizes their abuser. This emotional connection with an abuser is an unconscious way of coping with trauma or abuse. Um, trauma bonding in these types of relationships is present when there is an imbalance of power or ongoing abuse and um, isolation between warmth and violence. Now, you might say, well, I, you know what? I don't see how that, what they got to do with me. The signs that you experience some of this is, is this. There isn't mutual support between both people. There is ongoing and reoccurring conflict. Like you always arguing, you always come back to the same shit. Okay. And there really isn't a mutual support. Of support between both people. Um, maybe one is overly supporting one, and maybe one is not supporting the other at all. Um, sometimes when you begin to sit back and analyze yourself in relationships, you can see how selfish you are. You can see how dispossessed you have been or un disattached or Whatever the toxic behavior is, 
if you're willing to go there. If you ain't willing to go there, you might as well move on around because this ain't shit here for you, right? But if you think this is important and, you know, and you're interested in having a healthy environment, I don't think you should be bringing no kids in the world um, unless you have at least, at least question some of this stuff right here. There is disrespect, such as name calling, being careless with the other person's possessions, humiliation, among others. There is a healthy, unhealthy competition between y'all. There is a lack of cohesiveness, such as not being able to rely on one another. Now, a lot of us that have been in relationships are still are in relationships like this. And we probably would not even associate this with how one or both of our parents treated us um, and made us accommodating because you want to please your parent. And what happens is that those feelings almost just get transferred. Now, look, I'm not a therapist or nothing. I'm just trying to keep it real about what happens um, and what we experience in these damn relationships. And when you have had a few of them, at some point, you got to start saying, what the hell? Okay. A toxic, uh, the toxic relationships can be subtle and difficult to recognize. If clearly violent acts are not taking place, it may not be obvious that a relationship is toxic. Examples might include throwing stuff, putting a person down, attempting to control a person's relationships and behaviors, using vulnerability, a vulnerability, yeah, and apologizes, uh, apologies as manipulation and causing a person to think the negative aspects of the relationships are their fault. Now, for those of us who have been guilty of that behavior, you ain't got to admit it to me because like I said, I know I've, I've been on the, the given end of that. So, which led me to know that when you love someone and you don't know how to behave, pretty much. When your emotional behavior is out of balance, then you end up in a toxic relationship. And though you may love the person or what you describe or what you feel is strong feelings, um, once you understand the science of this stuff, then either you can respect each other in a healthy way or you can at least agree to disagree and, you know, move on or whatever that situation calls for. There is no specific look or type to describe someone who comes victim or who creates a toxic or traumatic relationship. Those who cause abusive relationships in range, uh, range in age and social status and don't fit a social profile. Like we are all being traumatized by um, the Republican Party, in my opinion, right now, um, especially if you're a black person or a person of color. Um, because anybody that was black that was out there at that, I hate to switch the gears, but that January 6th insurrection that looked like flies in a buttermilk. <laughs> You know damn well they was uh, associating with their abuser. You know, like the guy said, "I'm I, I'm not uh, black. I'm OJ, or I'm not black. I'm MAGA." <laughs> I <mean>. Anyway, <coughs> it's often not obvious to a person that they are in a toxic relationship. It's not your fault. If you realize that you are in a traumatic or dangerous situation, professional help will help you understand your options and plan for the safest way to leave the relationship. Sometimes it just leaves you. Um, and sometimes people don't have to get hurt. 
It doesn't have to get physical. More than likely, nine times out of ten, it does. But if you are in a certain stage, and if you have been working on yourself, it doesn't have to end that way. One or more obvious signs of being in a toxic, unhealthy relationship is whether there is intimate partner violence. Oh, oh. Intimate partner violence doesn't always mean physical harm. It could also include sexual and psychological harm. You know, and people withhold and withdraw from sex for a lot of reasons. Okay. Um, in a relationship, of course, sex is such an important part of it. But when you don't have trust, there are a lot of people, myself included, if you don't have the trust in the individual, it's hard for you to have sex with them. And those are the things that you have to get admit, admit. Those are the things you have to be willing to talk about. There are some people who have sex with people and they don't even want to talk to them. They don't even ask them no damn questions. They ask all the questions on the receiving end. Ain't you ever watched the paternity court? I mean, we're going to dissect one of them shows one of these days. It is very interesting how they put the horse before the cart. Then they want to start talking, you know, like, this is happening and I'm feeling this. Well, and or they end up on the receiving end of an IPV. This type of violence is not usually apparent until the relationship solidly is established. The abuser initially uses charm and skilled manipulation to win the person over and build strong connections. Once the bond is formed, the abuser demonstrates controlling behavior that can turn physical, sexual, or psychological violence and uses a mix of continued manipulation by showing remorse, warmth, kindness to keep the person in the relationship. How many women out there who got your ass beat? By your husband, your boyfriend, your fiance, your significant. It don't really matter. You got your ass beat in a relationship. And you're embarrassed or you've been emotionally de degraded in a relationship. And you figure out a way to make excuses for the person that is um, abusing you, actually. And if, and if it's them, you know, whoever it is, y'all, you make excuses for each other why you are having this bad behavior. You know, anyway, how to, um, you know, it, there's it's, it's normal to struggle with leaving a relationship that involves traumatic bonding. There are likely to be good times mixed with the violence, and it's common to feel love for the person perpetrating the violence. When deciding how to leave a toxic or violent relationship, it's important to consider the, uh, the safety of anyone vulnerable who will be involved, including children, as attempts and threats to leave can sometimes bring out additional and worse acts of violence. Recovering from a psychological, the psychological impact of a relationship with a trauma bond can take a long time. The bond that is formed with abusers creates a deep, deep, deep and complicated connection that is difficult to break. Even after the relationship has ended, the complex nature of traumatic bonding creates feelings of love and longing, even when there was physical, psychological, and or sexual abuse. Damn. The recovery process takes patience and often means working to regain the sense of control, developing social skills, building social supports, and practicing safety planning. With ongoing support, most people can build resilience and find post- Traumatic growth. Um, 
some people think that people that suffer these kind of relationships can never change. I don't choose to say that because usually the older people get um, their behavior slows down some. They're not as violent. They don't mean, and, or they could be now. Don't get me wrong. It can go either way. But in my opinion, because I, I can't think of the author's name now, but who's in a um, high conflict a relationship and have been for 25 years. But they know when they're getting ready to go through those changes, when things are getting ready to go get crazy, and they each give each other that space. And that's how their relationship has lasted this long. So it can be managed. I'm on because no it's the hardest thing to do is to change. So but you can't make these relationships man manageable if two people and the people are willing to recognize that there is anxiety and um, stress and a disorder and toxicity that is going on here and they're on the road to recover or trying to recover. You know, that's what I think. But like I said, I'm not a therapist. Um, it's very difficult to recognize and admit that you are in a toxic or a traumatic relationship and even harder to decide to leave. After leaving a traumatic relationship, most people state that they did so only because things progressed to a point where they feared for their lives or their children's lives. It probably feels impossible to leave or that things will get better over time. It might even feel embarrassing or as though it's your fault that you ended up in a situation like this in the first place. Um, but it doesn't. It's like an addiction. Addictions are very hard to break. And unless you can break it, you and the person cannot communicate on any kind of healthy level. Uh, because a cycle has to be broken. When we experience real and perceived threats, our brains and body react automatically to keep us safe. The brain responds without taking the time to understand and fully process the situation in order to save time and allow us to react more quickly to stay alive. Once the threat is over, the brain can usually process and store the experience as a memory, which allows us to learn and grow and respond to even better, to be even better the next time. Sometimes this doesn't happen in healthy ways, and this can contribute to PTSD and other mental problems. Okay? You know, so that's how the trauma affects the brain. Um, I speak a lot of times about children being in hostage situations and so when you talking about breaking a cycle, you have to go, you have to go there. Um, childhood trauma is any experience that is overwhelming to a child. This can uh, include things like physical, emotional, or sexual abuse, loss of a significant loved one, difficult divorce between caregivers, car accidents and acts of violence. Those things, it's hard enough for a grown-up to see those things. But when a child has to bear witness to that, it's almost um, just debilitating. It's just debilitating. It really is. Unprocessed trauma impacts our brains, bodies, behaviors, and overall well-being. Left untreated, childhood trauma can contribute to many types of issues in adulthood, from an inability to hold meaningful relationships to ongoing physical and mental health problems. And what got me is the stress from these relationships. Toxic and violent relationships can make an impact physically, 
causing hypertension, diabetes, and higher rates of HIV. They also have an effect on social, psychosocial development and can lead to behavior and mental health issues like sleep problems, depression, anxiety, post-traumatic stress, and suicide attempts. Now, I know y'all, a lot of you don't like that. Y'all probably done went off. So I ain't talking to them. I'm talking to the people who have stayed and listened. If you're in one of these kind of relationships, you owe it to yourself. No matter how much you love the person, you owe it to yourself to get out. You really do. You owe it to yourself to um, get yourself back together because it's almost like you don't know what normal is. It's like you don't. You forgot. I know I, I have. So I'm no, no uh, different than anyone else who had experienced this type of um, abuse, knowingly or unknowingly. So what I want you to do, if anybody who has or feel like they, you know, experienced that and want to get out or want to at least get more information, um, go to DuckDuckGo which does not track your search history or IP address um, or you know dial the hotline 1-800-799-SAFE that's 1-800-799-SAFE and that's the National Domestic Violence Hotline and just having somebody to talk to helps a lot. Other than the person that um, you feel that you're having a conflict with the most. Okay? All right, you guys. Oh, lastly, lastly, lastly. Renee and Douglas Jones, I want to thank you for donating the lighting um, to Mental House. Thank you so much. Thank you. I really appreciate it. And so does everybody else listening. And anybody else that wants to donate to the channel, the links are below in the description box. And I would hope that you would uh, take advantage of that. Join the channel and donate to the channel so I can continue to make content. So I appreciate you guys. Thank you very much. May God bless you. And I will see you in the next video.